Hi, everybody. Dr. Maria Sampalis here. Thank you for watching the, uh, this sponsored Facebook Live event with Cooper Vision. I have uh, Dr. Uh, Jennifer Stewart with us tonight. Hi, Jen. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Jennifer and I graduated from NECO in 2007. We're classmates. So it's good to have you on the show tonight. A lot of Thank wealth you. of knowledge. Uh, I'm glad to be here. Yeah. Jennifer, can you give us some background on you? I know you do a lot in the industry. So um, I, this is a good um, video to get uh, some knowledge and a different perspective. Sure. So I am a partner in a large private practice in Norwalk, Connecticut, for a doctor practice, um, practicing primary care, lots of contact lenses, dry eye, glaucoma. We have two pediatric optometrists as well. Um, I have a sports and performance vision training center also in Connecticut, different and separate from my private practice, working with athletes to enhance performance and help them become better athletes through sports vision training. Um, I, I do a lot of speaking for Cooper Vision as well. And um, I'm on the board of the, uh, the advisory board for the International Sports Vision Association. I'm on the alumni board for NECO. And I think that's about it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> if anything pops up in the middle of the video, just let us know, because I know you do a lot. Very involved, uh, very influential female in the industry. So I, I think it's great when females get involved and entrepreneurial and have their own business and explore and do other things. So it's a pleasure to have you on today. Thank uh, you. It's good to see you. I know it's been a long time since we graduated, so I'm I glad know. to be here. <laughs> So tonight's video, we want to talk about, um, you know, profit with contact lenses. A lot of doctors say there's no profit in contact lenses anymore, and they all complain about online competitors and all that. Give us your insight on, on your practice and how you're competing with online, and give us some tips and tricks. You know, I hear that from a lot of doctors, too. I think people sometimes give up and say, well, you know, I'll just fit the lenses and I'll just give them the script because they're going to go online anyway. And, I, you know, it's just not worth my time or my staff's time. And I couldn't disagree with that more. And we really keep a lot of our sales. I would say the majority of our sales are kept in house. I, you're going to have those patients who are bargain shoppers and are going on 1-800 or any of these other websites, but really I, the majority of our patients are buying their contact lenses in our office and it really is such a huge revenue driver. It's what kept us afloat during COVID. I mean, our office was shut down for eight weeks. We didn't lay off one staff member. We brought everybody back day one and I really attribute it to our, our robust contact lens sales. It really was the only revenue we were having through, um, through COVID. Yeah, I remember that. So, and Cooper Vision was a great partner in that, right? I mean, they're still allowing two boxes to be shipped for free, and that's additional revenue if you want to do it or pass it on to your patients. Absolutely. You know, I really think that's been super helpful. It's been a great way for us to extend contact lens prescriptions to patients who may have traveled, um, who were, you know, during COVID, who weren't able to get in the office for whatever reason or didn't feel safe coming in. Um, we are in Connecticut. We have pretty strict travel advisory and travel restrictions, which as of next week will become recommended and not required. Um, but that's really been something that's helped us to really be able to provide these patients with revenue. If they said, you know, I just traveled out of state and I can't make my appointment, but I'm out of contact lenses. You know, the knee jerk reaction can almost be to give them, you know, some diagnostics to get them through. But we were able to provide them for, you know, for free, ship a 90 day supply to them of daily disposables and schedule them at their convenience. And you really look like the hero doing that. You know, I've said, no problem. We understand, you know, let's ship you, you know, three months supply of contacts, no charge. It'll be to your house in a couple of days. And to them, you know, they're like, oh, wow, that's really great. I thought, you know, you're going to be mad that I was canceling my appointment. And on the reverse side, it's, I think it's just such a great patient experience that we said, we know things come up and, you know, we'll happily ship those contacts. You don't even have to come pick them up at the office, but we'll ship a small supply to your house. Yeah, I, I think that's important, too. Um, the shipment, are you are you selling more contact lenses now um, than before with COVID? Because I think people don't want to wear glasses anymore. Yeah, you know, that was something we weren't really sure how it was going to happen when we came back. My staff was a little bit nervous about doing, you know, INR training. And, and I really wasn't sure are patients going to want to drop out of contact lenses or are they going to go more into wearing lenses because of, you know, glasses and fogging. And in the beginning, I think there was a little bit of, of you know, I'm being lazy. I'm working from home. This is kind of nice. I don't know if we, we're near New York City, so we have a lot of commuters. So 
I think the novelty was, you know, I can kind of roll out of bed, throw my glasses on and, and be on the computer. But as that, you know, kind of novelty of a month or two of working from home has now stretched to a year and even possibly another six months to whenever, that I've definitely noticed has started to change. And patients said, you know, maybe I didn't wear them that much in the summer because I really wasn't going anywhere. But now that I'm really kind of trying to get back to myself and really getting dressed for work again, or I'm doing more social situations, I'm playing more sports, I'm going back to the gym, my kids are going back to sports, and I'm really getting out there and doing things I want to do, they're wearing contact lenses more. So, you know, we can see, you know, I track all of my numbers, and we really have seen a huge growth in contact lenses every month. And I really attribute that to just really good education, letting patients know it is safe to wear lenses. I feel like once in a while, I'll have a patient come in and say, I read something last year that it's unsafe to wear contacts during COVID. And so we really spend a lot of time educating them on, on the health benefits that they can expect with wearing contact lenses. Yeah. So as a good business owner, you keep track of business metrics and things like that. Average in the industry, 20% of gross is contact lens sales. Do you have an idea of, of what yours is? And um, I did because I wanted to make sure I knew because I knew I was coming on here. So <laughs> we're about the industry average. You know, I looked okay. at, at, you know, something I was like, wow, I never, I, you know, I haven't really looked at that in, in that detail. I work so hard on you know, tracking the metrics and the optical, especially, but um, we're about that, that 20% revenue, which I think is great. Um, we have a lot of private pay patients and, and a lot of, um, we spend a lot of time on really educating patients in the optical. So to see that, you know, a good, a good portion of our contact lenses in a large practice um, is from our contact lenses. Again, that that twenty percent is not small change, so it really is worth every conversation in that exam room. It is. And how do you encourage your supply of contact lenses, especially with dailies? If patients, a lot of doctors are like no one's going to spend a thousand bucks on a on a year supply or whatever the range is, eight hundred thousand. Uh, how what is how what how do you train your staff and and what's how do you guys respond to patients to kind of get them to do that? So we do fit a lot of dailies. We're about 85 to 92 percent daily disposable on any given month or quarter, um, which I'm super proud of. And, and I'm always striving to be closer to 100 um, percent. So, yes, you're right. Those are big sales. That's not you know a small amount of money that patients are spending. But I, the way that we've always worked with patients with daily disposables and, and we've always been um, a huge daily disposable practice is I just make, make an assumption that every patient is buying an annual supply from us the day that they leave our office. And for me, that's the the norm and anything else is the exclusion. And it's really our, our motto and our, our, our whole practice philosophy that every patient is going to leave with an annual supply and it's going to be direct shipped home. We don't stock lenses. We don't inventory them. Um, and we were doing that before the pandemic. Um, but I really make that assumption that every patient is going to buy your supply. And I actually am the one that has that conversation. Um, I, you know, I, I talk to them in the exam room and just don't ask. I just say, you know, Maria, it looks like everything's going great with your, 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 the lenses you're wearing, you know, you're in the best lens, my day, you're still happy with that lens, no change in prescription. I'm just going to ship an annual supply home. We'll use your insurance benefits and you'll get a great rebate at the front desk. And then I'll see you back in a year. And I, I don't ask. And I think if you ask, if you'll invite things that you don't want. And, you know, I always joke with my staff, if I hear you say, how many boxes do you want? I want to make a tip jar or, you know, a jar that everyone has to put a dollar in. Cause that's sure. the phrase that like, Oh, it like, it's like nails on a chalkboard to me. So I think patients don't know what your, what the response is supposed to be when you ask how many boxes they're like, I don't know the least amount. I mean, you tell me, but sure. if we make that assumption that they're going to get an annual supply because they need an annual supply and we let them know this annual supply will, you know, I'll see you back in a year when, you know, you'll be at the end of those lenses. And that's how we run the practice. And we get very little pushback. Um, it just takes a little bit of confidence, I think, in the exam room. And it, it takes practice. But once you have a few patients that don't blink an eye and go, OK, I think it just makes that conversation a lot easier. Yeah. I mean, you're the authority voice in the practice. They come to see you. They want your recommendation. You recommend whatever it is for healthcare stuff. Why not contact lenses? Absolutely. And and then dailies are are the best, you know, contact lens for a lot of patients. Um, they have a, a lot of them have BSP and they have a good plan right. and the rebates. I mean, it's yep. just a no brainer. A lot of times, do you sometimes if patients question it, do you 
break it down per box after the rebate, after the VSP benefit? What are some tips and tricks? I do it kind of informally. You know, if a patient, I always watch body language and I, you know, I watch if I say that to a patient and you kind of see them sit back or you just watch them. And, and if they look like they're unsure, I, you know, I, I have the VSP printout in front of me and I'll say, oh my gosh, Maria, you have awesome insurance. Did you know that? And they're like, no one's ever said that to me before. I go, you know, they contribute $150 towards your contact lenses. And there's a $200 rebate on my day. So that brings your price down to X. That takes about half of that off of your 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 supply. And, and I always, you know, I'm, I'm super casual in the exam room and I, I don't pull out a calculator. I just say, you know, I, that brings it to around X dollars a box. Don't quote me on that. But doesn't that sound like a great savings? I mean, who doesn't want to save money? And everyone wants to know that the insurance benefits that they're entitled to are really helping them. And, and as we know, 99% of them walking in don't know what their benefits are. Um, so to really phrase it in the way that, wow, you're going to have a huge savings on these. And there's a great rebate. We take care of filling everything out for them. My staff gives them everything when they leave. Um, so we make it super easy for them to get that money back. You know, I hate to send them off into the world and have to guess on how to do the rebate. We go through it and show them how to do it. And, um, and, and a lot of them come in and they'll say, is there, what's the rebate on my, my days this year? You know, they're so well trained knowing that there's a rebate on that and knowing that that brings the annual supply down. So we really train them to expect to get a year supply of their daily disposables. And, you know, and if they're getting glasses, I'm like, well, you have an actually better plan towards glasses, but you still get that awesome rebate. So you get to do both. It's like double dipping. You get savings on your contacts and your glasses and, and just make sure that they know what the value is and what they're bringing to the table. So you're saying a lot of success from building a practice on building on prof, contact lens profit comes from the doctor, right? So I think so. you need to be confident and just do it, I mean, right? Just like you'd be confident in prescribing a medication for, you know, bacterial conjunctivitis or something else. It's the same thing right. with contacts, right? They're looking for us. I mean, you know, I know a lot of us hesitate about selling and, you know, we feel like we're selling and that's not my part as a doctor. But really what I'm selling is that I'm selling the ability for these patients to have a clean lens every day and the ability for them to not see me for a year and to not think about me for a year. But I'm also selling the ability to take them out of the contact lens market for a year. So my you know, what I don't want is to send them home with a 90 day supply. And at day 90, it's a Sunday night and they're like, oh my gosh, I ran out of lenses, but Dr. Stewart's office isn't open until eight. Oh, I, you know, what do they do? They pull out their phone, they go on 1-800-CONTACTS. And once you've lost that sale and they have that convenience of ordering, you know, at Sunday night, because we didn't give them their annual supply, I think it's very hard to get that back. We can do it. I work really hard to do it. But if I make sure that annual supply is dispensed from my office, I've taken them out of the market for a year. Yeah, I think that's important, too, because also when you do the annual supply, it saves staff phone calls, follow ups, Absolutely. everything else that they could be time where they could be booking another appointment, selling glasses or doing other things. Um, so I think that's another point that a lot of doctors don't factor in that kind of saves you time and money on a lot of other stuff. You know what? I, I, yes, if anyone's ever heard me speak, I love giving homework. So my homework for everyone who might not be as robust in annual sales is kind of go home tonight or, you know, think about it tonight or over the weekend and, and make a diagram of every step in the office that that has to happen when a patient places an order, whether that's them calling by phone or them emailing or even um, going on your website, but make a, a list of each step in that process. If they're calling your office and the patient wants to order lenses, if you have paper charts that, you know, the staff have to retrieve that chart, you know, get back on the phone, place the order, put the payment through, now order the contact lenses. If you're shipping it to your office, now the staff has to check the lenses in, call the patient probably two or three times before they actually come. And now they're coming into our office during COVID when most of us have a lot of precautions and, and safety measures in place. So add that time in and then dispensing the lenses. If you're doing that 90 day supply, you're doing that four times. So really think about the cost of each step of that journey. And if you could just eliminate that by selling an annual supply, like you said, you know, not only are you profiting with that annual supply of contact lenses, but you're profiting on that staff time that you're not using. Yeah, that's a lot of great points there. A lot of doctors don't think about what do you ha what happens when um, patients just say, I, I just come in to get my script, new patient. I want to buy online. Um, how do you how do you approach that conversation? How, do you price match as well? What happens with that? 
You know, I think a lot of patients, their knee jerk reaction is to buy online because they don't know what else to do. And they might not know that we have contacts in the office. You know, they might not even have had an optometrist that sold lenses and they might just have always bought them online, but didn't know that purchasing through an office was an option. So I'll let them know, you know, we're happy to order those home. You know, I'm happy to order those today. The shipping's free. It'll be shipped right to your house too. And a lot of them, that's enough. They go, oh, I just thought I'd have to come back. Oh no, no one wants to make an extra trip right now. Um, if they're, you know, if they're, you can kind of get a sense of what they're asking. And if they say something about price, you know, that's where I really bring up the rebates and say, you know, I totally get it. There are so many things that are less expensive online, but you know, I, online is not always cheaper. And that's always the common perception with patients is that it's going to be cheaper online. And once in a while, you know, I'll pull it up on my computer, but I don't usually have to go that far. I'll say, you know, I know you think they're always a lot cheaper online, but they're actually not. And I usually tell them flat out, I usually price a lens at what it's being sold at online. And then we have the benefit of having great rebates. So you actually will save and we can use your full VSP benefit here. You'll get the rebate for an annual supply. We'll ship them direct and then we'll take care of it. How's that sound? Yeah. And is it a hundred percent? No. I mean, I wish I could sit here and go every single patient. It's a hundred percent. I mean, in the, in the real world, it's not, but it really um, eliminates a lot of the, 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 reasons that patients are shopping online. And I think a lot of us would be surprised as to what those reasons are. And it's not always that they don't want to buy from us. It's just no one's ever really given them a reason to do it. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And then even so some doctors that, you know, have a little higher pricing, even if they have to price match, right? 1-800 contacts, their prices are high. I mean, other one of the ones are ridiculously low and you can't, I mean, so yeah. you just can't because sometimes it's lower than what we get them for. Right. But I mean, even just to price match it and, that you're getting the sale. Plus, they're not in 1-800 contact system, so they don't recall them before your exam, right? So it's things like that as well to kind of retain the patient and have it. Because throughout the year, there's a lot of disruptors out there where they're getting information. And like you said, if, if they're getting a year supply, they're not paying attention to that ad from 1-800 if, if Sunday night pops up, right, or something else. So that's also important too. So I, I think I think that's a value. And um, I think we have a lot of resources from our reps to kind of give us some pointers. I mean, Absolutely. Does, does your Cooper Vision rep come in and, and give some information on how to sell and what the latest is and all that? Yeah, she's a wonderful resource. And I encourage you all to use your reps. Um, they're just, they know what's going on. They know, I think so, so often we practice in a vacuum in optometry and we, we are in our offices. Maybe we have another doctor in there. Um, thankfully, with, with technology now, we can all talk a little bit more frequently, but we kind of practice by ourselves and we don't know what's going on even in our neighborhood. So I, I really utilize my reps and ask them, you know, what's going on with all the practices in our area? I feel fortunate that I get to hear a lot of the feedback through my work with Cooper Vision and IDOC, you know, kind of the, the, the feeling of what's going on in the industry. But a lot of us kind of just don't have that exposure. So talking to my reps and seeing, you know, what people are doing. I, I'm just generally curious, curious about what my colleagues are doing. I don't consider it competition. I just want to make sure we're all doing a great job um, and making sure that we're all really taking care of our patients. And if, if I get a patient who saw one of my colleagues who was also very proactive at selling an annual supply, it makes my job easier. So I know, you know, insurance changes, patients move, um, sometimes here traffic is horrible. So patients might move one town over and not feel like driving to their old practitioner and they'll come to me. But I know if, if you know, Dr. Smith down the road, well, I know Dr. Smith does a really good job selling annual supplies. So they've trained that patient. So when they come in, they just expect to buy their lenses from me. So I think if all of us did a little bit better job at selling that annual supply, that we, it would just help us all grow because patients do move, patients do change doctors, but if they're conditioned that that annual supply is gonna come from their doctor, then it won't matter who they're seeing. That, that's a great point because I just bought a practice in August <clears throat> and he did a great job of selling high-end one-day contact lenses. And for me to go in, it's easy, it's, it's gonna happen, right? So it's just easy. And then not wasting your energy on, on the same conversation we're going. So they're, it's very easy, they're used to the rebates, so they, he tra he's trained them already. Yeah. And so I think that's important. And that's a great way to kind of think to kind of all work together because we're not, we're, we're, all, we're all together in the industry to help patients, right? We're all, I mean, insurance changes. So, and we can refer sometimes if there's a patient that 
wants a specialty contact lens, something like that, I don't do that. I want to send it to my colleague down down the street. We should all be working together. And I, I think that's a good point where we can kind of um, learn from each other um, to sell and you know keep um, income in house for our practice to continue to grow instead of losing them to, to online competitors. Absolutely. You know, I think it's just so important that our patients expect that the care they're going to get from us and our colleagues is the same. And I, I agree with you, you know, we are all in it together and we're here at the end of the day, we want to provide great care for our patients. And I don't, I don't take it personally if a patient moves and says, who do you recommend in X town? I'm like, oh my gosh, you're so lucky. I have the best person for you to see. And while I'm sad to lose you, I know that you're going to be well taken care of. And I know that they're going to continue the care that I provided. And I usually know my colleagues around here are fitting the same lenses as I am. And that comes from my rep too. You know, I want to know what everybody else is doing. And I think we're all curious about other doctors and, you know, if somebody, and, and also it works on the reverse, you know, my rep will come to me and say, you know, Dr. Smith in X town is really struggling with daily disposables and you basically have the same patients. What do you suggest? And I said, P have them pick up the phone and call me, you know, that's what I'm here for. And of course I want to help them be successful. And, you know, where I say, here's my tips, but pick up, have them pick up the phone and call me. And, and I'm happy to do that. And we do do that. You know, I have a colleague here who, you know, he'll say, you know, I'm, I'm not where I want to be in daily disposables. What can I do? I go, well, I'll come and talk to your staff. You know, I think where, where's the disconnect? Is it in the exam room? Is it in your staff? Do your staff not believe that a year supply is the best? Do you know, like, let's work together to figure this out because, if my patient moves to your town, I want to make sure that they're getting the same care that I'm providing. Do you feel that daily disposables are the best profitability for a practice to grow a practice, retention for patients, a lot of indirect revenue, indirect revenue? Absolutely. You know, I think if, if there isn't daily disposable available in the prescription for a patient, that's going to be my choice. And <clears throat> I think, you know, on the, on the health side, I mean, I don't think there's a healthier lens than a daily disposable um, right now is such a great time to fit daily disposables also. I mean, if we've never had a time where people are more health conscious and more conscious of contamination and disinfection. So to give the patient the option to throw their lens out at the end of the day, I've had some patients that even I've struggled with. I'm like, okay, here comes, you know, Maria again, man, I cannot get her out of this unnamed lens that I really like, ah, oh, come on, Maria, you could do it. And I've had that conversation where I, you know, kind of said, you know, really, I know that you like wearing your X lenses, but at the end of the day, you've been out at Walmart, you've been picking your kids up at school, you're going into your office now, and that lens is traveling with you for two to four weeks. What if I could give you a lens that at the end of the day, you threw out? I'm sure you're coming home and washing your clothes right away, and we're not really still cleaning down our packages right now, but we're still very conscious. We wash our hands a lot more. Um, but what if I could give you the option to have a lens that you throw out at the end of the day and you start with a fresh lens in the morning? Would that be interesting to you? Or is that something you could see yourself doing? And you know, it's very rare that somebody's like, nah, you know, I still want to wear that lens every day and I'm fine with it. I mean, you still will get those patients, but right now is such a great time to have that conversation about hygiene with patients. And I think we're really in tune to being as clean as we can. Um, on the profitability side, I mean, they are just a great way to be more profitable. They're, in general, patients are not stretching daily disposables. I know that there are some that do, and I know that they exist, and they're in my practice too. But in general, those patients are buying an annual supply and they're returning in a year. Um, so they are really great patients to have. They're really compliant. They tend to use that annual supply and come right back versus you may be a monthly wearer who's buying an annual supply and you know, I guess I go maybe, I know that, you know, the dreaded, how often do you throw your contact lenses out? Well, they're monthly lenses, but that's not what I asked. How often do you replace them? Yeah. Well, every six to eight weeks. Well, now that annual supply has lasted them two years. So you've missed that exam and now you've missed a chance, another, uh, another chance in the annual supply. So with daily disposables, we know that those patients return much sooner to our offices and, and they really do get that annual supply. For doctors that are hesitant or have a little struggle with getting the year supply, I mean, doing the dailies per se with patients, do you feel like a good entrance point is getting into your first time wearers or maybe doc, uh, patients that want to wear contacts just on the weekends, hobbies, gym, things like that, like um, presenting an option to eyeglass wearers that never wore contacts before, but say, look, I can give you this and they're for vacation, they're for the beach or whatever the case is. 
I think so. You know, I used to be a part-time wearer. I will say in COVID, I've been wearing my lenses every day because I get tired of glasses on my face too. <clears throat> but for part-time wearers, it's great because a lot of them don't know what contact lenses are like, or they might not really understand the care. And, you know, I, we have a lot of athletes here and I say, you know, you, you would be great for you know tennis. And they go, great. I said, but the days that you're not wearing them, if you're wearing a daily disposable, it doesn't matter. You open that lens, put it on at the end of your tennis match, you throw it away and you have a fresh lens waiting for you when you want it. With a reusable lens, you have to take care of it. And a lot of them go, oh, really? Oh well, yeah, every day, if you're not wearing that lens, you still have to take it out. You still have to clean it. You still have to make sure the case is clean, refill the solution. And you know, even if you're wearing them once a week, you have to clean them every day. And I think, you know, I think that's a big turnoff for people because especially busy people, they're like, I don't want another thing to take care of. And I think most of them think it's set it and forget it. They wear them once, they plop them in the case. And, you know, I wear them once a month and I take them out of the case once a month. And I said, well, I'll see you very soon for a corneal ulcer. Um, and then, yeah, it's going to cost a lot more for me to fix that than it would have cost the annual supply of daily disposables. So let's get ahead of this. Um, but I think part-time wearers are huge. And, you know, even what we do a lot, especially with our higher prescription patients, is if I know they're going to look at glasses in the optical, I just pop a pair of daily disposables on them and, and let them send them out to the optical and go, you know, how many times have you tried glasses on and, you know, you have the mirror right here because you can't see. So why don't we just put a pair of daily disposable contact lenses? Don't worry, we'll throw them out at the end. You just toss them in the garbage. So, really? You have my well, That's a great point. A great point. Absolutely. It, it helps both in your optical sales because now they can see what they look like, especially with the mask on. Maybe um, they want to buy one or two boxes then. Yeah. That's a great point. Yeah. That's a great point. It's, it's And it really helps the optical sales because now they feel better because they can stand back and look. And, and you know, we make a big deal about it too. You know, a lot of our patients have been coming forever. So my opticians will go, look at you without glasses on. And, you know, I mean, who doesn't want to feel good about themselves? And <clears throat> a lot of times my opticians will continue that conversation. They'll say, you know, I, I'll just take those lenses out for you. But, you know, if you really like them, why don't we just do a training while you're here and then we'll send you home with them and see how you do. And it really works that, you know, they're a captive audience and they've got them on and they're, they might have been a little nervous of how they felt, but they forget about it really quick because they're looking at glasses. So I think yeah. it's a really re great. It helps both your contact lens sales and your optical sales. No, I think those are great points that you're saying, you know, so it helps with optical sales, of course. Um, mm -hmm. Also, the convenience factor, right, that you were talking about, where they wear them for a day and throw them out, and they don't have to worry about that extra work. It's so, it's so true. Like being a mom, like for me, I'm like, I don't have to worry about, it. like, oh my, I'm right to fall asleep, just throw them out, right, and yeah. and don't have to worry about that. That's that's pretty, that's important. And then this culture now is convenience, right? Convenience. So, so it's convenient. So if we portray it as more convenient. Um, instead of getting solution and everything else and the cost, I always incorporate like, oh, you know, it's cost a solution too. Yep. Um, so that's, I think that's a value. And, um, you know, the, the fact that, you know, putting them in their eyes for them to kind of check while they're dilating or picking out glasses, yep. that's a good pointer. So when you have that minus eight that wears glasses and they're dilating in the waiting room and now they can see or something like, or see what, what the glasses look like. I mean, that's yep. important. So then you get the sale and then, right. I do a lot of online reviews. Like I, I'll be like, can you review it? They, they're like, this is the best doctor. She's given me contacts, right? right? And and that's indirect value to grow your practice. That other doctors never presented this option. So I, I think these are all great points and a lot of um, you know great advice on on how to you know make income um, from contact lenses that a lot of doctors feel like they can't. I, I would also add, you know, don't forget your toric patients. You know, some of these are. You know, a, a lot of our patients with astigmatism, you know, they're 20 years ago, they were told they could never wear contact lenses. So they, they never ask again because somebody told them, you know, you can't wear a contact lens and they might not even have astigmatism. And they're like, I was told I can't wear lenses because I have astigmatism and they have like a quarter diopter. But they're the ones who really get excited because they've really never had a daily disposable option for them. And you know, I'm really quick to fit my low toric um, patients as well with, with astigmatism lenses because I don't want them to compromise on their vision, on their clarity, on their comfort, just because they have astigmatism and because the lens is gonna cost more. Um, these patients are really willing to pay for better vision. And even though it might be a jump in the cost, if you can show the value of what you're fitting them in, they're, they're not going to have an issue with it. And 
I love it when I have a patient come in who's, you know, a, a, a very easy prescription. They're wearing a lens for astigmatism. And I said, did your previous doctor ever mention daily disposables? And they go, oh, there's none available for me. And I go, yeah, I have a great new lens for you. And, they, you know, the, and then the best part is having it there for them. You know, I said, I'll just grab it and you can put it on. They're like, you have it now? Yeah, you can leave with it. So, you know, these patients have been told for so long that they have these complex prescriptions and they they might not, you know, they might be our low toric patients, but they get to leave with a daily disposable. Um, I will bet that most of them don't ask what the cost of the lens is because they're so blown away by the fact that they know dailies ex exist, but they've always thought it wasn't an option for them. So they're my favorite ones to fit because they, they've been for so long, have been probably afraid to ask or just conditioned to just assume that these technologies are not available for them. But patients talk also. So, you know, I would encourage you to think about the conversations your patients are having outside of your office because they will hear about daily disposables and you don't want them to hear about it from their friends. You want it to, them to hear about it from you. And, you know, the, the last thing that any of us want is our patient to be at a soccer game saying, oh yeah, I just had my appointment with Dr. Stewart. And, you know, Maria says, oh, I just saw my doctor too. I got these awesome lenses I throw out every day. And, you know, my patient's going, man, why didn't my doctor mention that? Like, I was just there yesterday too. And, you know, wait, is your doctor accepting new patients? Because that technology sounds really cool. And maybe Dr. Stewart's not as up on technology as I thought. So I'm going to go see your doctor because Dr. Stewart never brought it up to me. So I think so many of us assume that our patients aren't willing to pay for the, the technology and the expense of daily disposables, but we have to give them that option. And we can't make an assumption that they're not going to pay for it because it is more expensive. Um, you know, I think if we look at what we're wearing or what we fit our, our family with, um, most of us are wearing, I have daily disposables in right now. I have my day lenses in right now. So why would I compromise for my patients and make the assumption that it's not worth it to them? Yeah, I think some doctors, when they're seeing a bunch of patients, it's on cruise control. Patients don't complain about it. You know, I think open, asking open-ended questions kind of help to, to, to do that. Um, so patients feel like, you know, they're getting the latest, right? Um, the other thing is too, I talk to a lot of doctors and um, I always say charge for what you're worth for your experience and fitting fees. You don't have to be the lowest. You're, and it's not going to bring in more patients. I'm telling you, I tried. It doesn't work. It charge works. for what you are worth for the time that you spend for the education that you're giving your patients. They want the latest technology. They want a good experience. And, you know, you charge what your chair costs are for that practice. Um, you don't need to charge under, um, you know, every year, right? Correct? That's additional yeah. revenue in a practice because that's an exam that you're doing, right? Right. We, we just raised our contact lens fees yesterday, believe it or not. My friend's desk manager came to me and she said, I think we're undercharging for our contact lens exams. And I said, what do you mean? And she said, I ran the numbers. We did X number of contact lens exams this year. So far, we did X number in 2020. I think if we raised our contact lens fees by $10 each patient, we would generate X dollars in added revenue. And, you know, do you get that from, you know, then I have doctors say, well, I know some VSP is capped at this and some IMED is capped at that. And so why should I raise my fees? Because I'm only getting X dollars, but that's not all the patients you're seeing. And, you know, we have a lot of private pay patients. We have a lot of patients who are wearing multifocal and astigmatism lenses. So that will become a percentage of their, um, you know, percentage off for some of these IMED plans. So, you know, I encourage you not to get bogged down by assuming that every patient has the same copay and why should I raise my fees because I'm only getting X dollars from insurance. That's not all. And, and that's not really probably as many as you think. So I think it's a great point. You know, we, we, we spend time, you know, we're here tonight talking about it. This is time that you're investing in your practices and it's time you're investing in your education and we should charge appropriately for that. You know, we spend all this time being up on the latest technology and, you know, it really is important that we do value our expertise and value our knowledge and value what we can provide our patients. And, I, you know, I, I said to my front desk, I said, OK, let, let's do a study. You know, I said, let's ra we raise our fees from 10 to 20 dollars a patient. Um, so I said, let's see what happens. I guess we did that Tuesday. I was there Tuesday and Wednesday. And I said, tell me what happens. Um, how many patients are going to have a problem with that? I mean, it's a small study and it's only two days. So I hope I didn't jinx it, but the number was zero. We had zero patients balk at that contact lens exam fee. Mm -hmm. And I can guarantee you, we, we generated quite a bit more revenue in two days 
Um, we tend to have two doctors every day seeing patients and, and we have a huge contact lens practice. So, you know, even if it's $5 that you increase your rep, your increase your exam fee, um, don't undercharge. I agree with you. You know, definitely don't undercharge because what you can provide in education for your patients is so great. Um, you know, I, my favorite part is when I, you know, I have a patient come in and they're in my day, you know, they're in the best lens and they sit in the chair and go, what's new? What's new this year? Do you have a better lens for me? And I'm like, I actually don't. But when you have a patient that is so programmed to be expecting you to give them the best technology and they're asking to be refit, there's nothing better than that. And, you know, it really is a great way to, to, to have a practice where patients are begging you to have the latest technology. Yeah, I think that's really important. Yeah, I think it goes back to our original conversation at the beginning of doctors being confident in themselves with their fees, with recommendations, and how they're going to do their practice. Uh, um, the doctor before wasn't charging a certain fee for fitting. No, nope, I had a few patients over the, since August complain about it. Um, but, you know, in general, they pay their fee. They understand what it is. Um, so, and that's that's part of the exam. So, um you know, it, it's just training your patients again to, to know what, you know, what your value is, how the rules are in the practice. And, and when, so I'm, I, when I'm assessing their contacts, I tell them what I'm doing too. You know, I don't just like look around the slit lamp and, you know, <clears throat> either, well, I talk a lot about their family and, you know, things like that. But when I'm looking at the slit lamp, I'm telling them exactly what I'm looking for. And I'm telling them what I'm looking at and why I'm assessing their contact lenses. And again, I think we make so many assumptions about what the average person knows and we way overestimate what they know. And, and you know, we assume that they know, okay, a contact lens fit. They're like, oh, but I already wear contacts. So why do I have to be fit? So we change that nomenclature to a contact lens evaluation. The doctor has to evaluate the, the health of your eye and the way that that contact sits on the front of your eye every year because it changes. That's different than saying it's a contact lens fit I don't know, you wear a contact, so you have an extra fee. Like that that doesn't give me great confidence. Well, maybe I don't want to wear contacts anymore. Or I'll go down the street where that guy doesn't charge. But if the staff starts by saying, you know, Dr. Stewart's gonna take extra time to make sure the lens you're wearing is the highest technology, that it's the right prescription for you, and that it fits the front of your eye well because it's a medical device. And then that handoff in the exam room is that I'm reiterating what I'm doing. You know, I'm looking through this microscope at the front of your contact lens, how it sits on the front of your eye, you know, blinking, making sure the lens is moving enough, but not too much. You don't want it too tight or too, too loose. I mean, I go through the same thing every time, but the patients, you know, it's like, wow, she is looking at something. She's just not using this light to look at nothing. And I think it, it gives them a little value into what we're doing and that, you know, I think the common you know, unfortunate common misconception that all contacts are the same and, and we know they're not. And I think that's a big problem facing the industry. And we've let that happen is that they become a commodity, but they're still a medical device. And, you know, patients have to know the danger they could get in by an improperly fitting contact lens. But while I have them in the slit lamp, I always joke, they're, they're a captive audience when their chins in the chin rest and you're looking at, you can say anything because they know you're looking at them, you know, I go, Maria, I know you're happy in the lens you're wearing, but have your eyes looked a little red to you? You know, when I look through this microscope, I can see blood vessels growing into the front of your eye to bring oxygen in, you know, and, and they're like, oh my God, she can see that? You know, so what I'm going to do, Maria, is I'm going to fit you with a better lens that's going to provide you more oxygen. It's going to be more comfortable. And the added benefit is you can throw that lens out at the end of the day and put a fresh one in. How does that sound to you? And, you know, their chins and the chin rest are like, okay. <laughs> She must have saw something. So, you know, use that time wisely. You know, don't be silent. Um, but it's a great time for education to really, again, reiterate what we're doing and what we're looking for because we make the assumption they know we're looking at how the contact lens fits and they have no idea what we're doing. Well, you're also being efficient, right? While you're yeah. talking, you're talking out loud so that you don't have to do it again. Mm -hmm. And then also it's it's you don't make it a commodity. You make it the medical model, right? Yep. There's neovascularization. I, you need this lens. This is the lens you need. You need, and this is why you need it. Um, and you know, maybe I'll see you back in six months. Whatever the case is to see, I'm going to take anterior photos. We're going to do this. Whatever the case is. Um, so I think just bringing it back to the medical model, just like you said with dailies, you know, less risk for ulcer and things like that. So I think it's you know a bigger approach to looking at contacts besides just I'm just here for a script and renew my my lenses. 
Right. And just saying, well, yeah, you can buy them online. They're cheaper or I'm not going to, I'm not going to fight for it. And <clears throat> I like, you know, I, I joke, I make it a game. I want, I want to walk in there and I want my patients to do what I think is best for them. And I walk in knowing, you know, my staff will say, oh, you know, this is a new patient. They're wearing X lens. And I go, okay, game on. You know, I know what lens I want them to be in. And, and here's their complaints. The lenses are dry by mid afternoon. Their eyes are red. Okay. You told me why your lenses are not working. And now I'm going to give you that solution. And yes, will that solution cost more? Absolutely. But it should because it's better technology. And I'm not apologizing for that. Um, you know, it, it's not my fault the lenses cost more, but it's better technology and we're willing to pay for better technology. So they're maybe, willing to pay for an iPhone. They can pay for a contact lens. Absolutely. You know, I said it, it and I think we often feel bad. Like I, I think optometrists, we're such good people and we have such big hearts and we feel so bad that the things that we're providing our patients with cost money. It's OK. And it's okay to provide them with a better material that's going to cost them money, but it's because it's not our job to decide if that's too much for that patient. And if you think that a lens, a particular lens is appropriate and best for a patient, then it's your, it's your job to really make sure that you are providing that to a patient. It's not enough to just say, well, Maria's not complaining. I know she could be in a better lens, but I'm running behind. And, you know, I don't think she's willing to pay for it. She just doesn't seem like she wants a lens. Well, did you ask her? Um, you know, did you ask what's important to her? Did you ask about allergies as, as you know, my eyes are, I even switched to new contacts because my eyes were so itchy. I put a new pair of daily disposables in today. Um, so my eyes weren't red, but you know, asking about allergies right now in the Northeast, what if I could give you a better solution for your contact lenses so they're not always so itchy and swollen? You know, we assume again that patients understand all of that and they really don't. And it's our job to provide that education to them. All right. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Stewart, for joining us. A wealth of information. I think a lot of doctors are going to get uh, um, some good information from this. I know I learned some stuff. I'm, I, I love your passion for the business of optometry. I really do. Um, thank so you. thank you so much for uh, joining us. If, if anyone has any questions, can do you have an email where they can contact you? Yep. Uh, Jen.Stewart at perform2020.com. Um, that's my personal email. You can find me on Instagram. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn. I'd love to hear from you again. You know, if we can help each other be more successful, then we just make the field and the industry more successful. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.